the day folks. Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, just a real quick uh, little mention about a project I did. Just a real neat way to keep some skulls. Uh, if you want to, you know, you got some trophies or you got some skulls you want to display. Uh, I did this one up. It's a full crystal, what I call crystal epoxy display. Uh, now this is a raccoon skull, as you can see. Uh, it's pretty cool and uh, it's uh, going to go up on my shelf, you know. Um, just as a as a display, you know, something I can bring in to show the kids or whatever, you know. Um, if you you know you have anybody you want to show displays to or whatever, this is a great way they can they can get a real close up look. Uh, but they can't touch it, they can't mess with it, right? And and this will be this will stay this way forever, right? This is a full crystal epoxy, you know, um, pour. So uh, anyway, if you want to know how to do this, uh, stick uh, stick with me here on the channel. I'm going to show you a real quick video on how to make one of these to preserve and keep any size trophy, any size skull that you, uh, that you wanna keep. So uh, anyway, here we go. So there are times that I find it difficult to get the um, to get the hot glue to make a good seal around the, the bottom and the sides. Uh, when that happens, you can use uh, silicone caulking to do the same thing. So for this one, um, I poured water in and it leaked a little bit. So uh, I ended up just taking some silicone, so just some regular caulking and going over everything that I had done before. And then I tested it out again and now it holds water clear up, clear up to here. Okay, uh, next step in this process, you just want to mark from the bottom, uh, from, the, from your base up the, up the wall, about one inch, and then just make a, a good mark. You just want to be able to see where the one inch mark is as you, uh, as you do this. Okay guys, once you get your mold all built and you've got your skull hangers all figured out so you can you know, display the skull uh, the way that you want it, uh, the next step is your epoxy. Now the epoxy that I use, uh, this is called New Classic Thick Pour Epoxy. Uh, it's a great epoxy, it's one of the best I've ever used. I've built, I've built some, uh, some really nice cutting boards with it and some river tables and uh, it's, really, um, it's really simple to use. It's a two to one mixture and it's the, the reason i like it is because it's uh slow curing right so you can pour it thick it's not a tabletop epoxy you don't have to keep going layer by layer by layer by layer you can pour this up to two inches thick in one single pour and then let it set and then you can either like pour on top or, or whatever so you can do you can do a lot more uh you can do thicker pours uh with this now it does generate heat so make sure that your um Make sure that you're following the instructions. Whatever epoxy you end up buying, Total Boat is good too. Um, 
if you buy their thick pour stuff. But anyway, uh, this is available on Amazon. I'll drop a link in the description down below uh, to this product right here. Um, cheapest place I've ever found it is on Amazon. And uh, again, it's easy to use. Also, I use Black Diamond Pigment. Uh, for my coloring for my epoxy now I don't use a lot of color in this particular project but whenever I do I uh, I love this black diamond stuff it works out real well so again it's available on Amazon and I'll put a link uh, in the description down below to that too okay so whenever you're dealing with epoxy just make sure you're being safe okay you should be in a pretty well ventilated area uh, when you start mixing it up there's not really any smell or toxic fumes to it too much but you always want to make sure that you're safe there is there it is a chemical mixture right so uh, you want to you want to have gloves on and you want to make sure that you've got the right everything laid out first clean up of this stuff again read your instructions on the epoxy containers or, or on the on the flyer that you get with your epoxy sometimes it's like 99 percent you know alcohol or sometimes it's like paint thinner or whatever it is that you need to clean this stuff up so make sure like you can see here i've got everything all laid out right i've got my paper towels i've got my rubber gloves you're gonna need a torch okay to pop a few bubbles and that type of thing but uh, just make sure you get all your stuff laid out before you start doing anything with epoxy because you don't want to have to stop and start. I will tell you one thing, there's tons of different ways you can screw up epoxy, but don't let it scare you. It's really not that, that hard to do. Uh, just do small b batches, right? That way if you mess up a batch or something goes wrong, you haven't wasted a lot of epoxy. It's fairly expensive. Um, in the world of MB Wildman, I would say this is, this is expensive, but uh, I've been wanting to do this and so we're, we're doing it. But I just do small batches, so if I screw one up, then it's, you know, I still have some epoxy left to, to work with, but um, uh, the big thing that they, the, the big thing that I've discovered, the ways that I've screwed this up before, uh, a couple different things. Make sure you're working in a nice, warm environment, and again, your epoxy will tell you what the, what the, what the temperature should be for the best curing process, so make sure that you're somewhere in that range. It, this will not work if you're out in the cold garage, okay, so you got to have, you got to have a, a place that, that's the right temperature for this to set up right. And also, if you don't stir it well enough. So, I mean, when they say on the package you need to stir this, you know, uh, hand speed, you need to stir it for at least five minutes, they mean at least five minutes. You have to have a completely, uh, a complete stirred mixture, completely blended together, or the chemical process won't work and it won't set, uh, or it won't set properly or whatever. So, uh, anyway, here we go. We're going, to, uh, we're going to pour our first layer of epoxy. And what we're trying to do with the first layer for this product is we're just trying to pour the bottom of our mold up to the one inch mark. We're leaving the skull alone for now. We just want one inch of epoxy in the bottom of our entire mold here. Okay, that's the goal. So I've set the mold aside and I'm going to get ready here. And I'm going to mix. Okay, it's been like two minutes and change and I'm already thinking oh this is all good and it's all mixed together uh, that's what happened the first time that I tried this as well and you know what I poured it and six seven eight days later it was still tacky <laughs> who knew okay so I'm gonna keep stirring for the full five minutes here just so you know Let's, let's pour. Beautiful. It is my suggestion that you take your torch and just give this a real quick, just, just brush it over it just a bit. And what you'll see is that it pops all of those bubbles. There's a whole whack of little bubbles on top. And I'll see if I can show that to you just in a second here. If I could get my torch to work. Sorry about that. I had to switch torches. Couldn't get that yellow one to work for some reason. Not sure why, but it didn't work. But gone. Okay, every bubble. 
all of those bubbles that were there, all gone. You're just left with a nice pure finish and some shine, okay? So every time we do a pour, we just hit it for a second with the torch and that pops the bubbles for us. Now, I know that it takes an actual like seven days for this to actually completely cure, but we're not waiting seven days before we actually um, add this, add the skull to our mixture here. So basically I'm gonna give this 24 hours uh, to set just like this. After 24 hours, uh, it's been my experience with this with thick pour epoxy that you'll come back and it's just a little bit tacky still, but it's solid enough that we can suspend and rest the skull on it. Okay, 24 hours gone by, and um, back here again, checking out what we've done. And what we've got is exactly what we're looking for. We've got one inch of epoxy in the bottom of our mold. Okay, five minutes of stirring. Uh, we've got our epoxy uh, ready to pour. Now, um, with this pour, you have to be just a little bit more careful. You gotta pour a little slower, uh, and you wanna make sure you don't pour directly onto the skull, okay? So you wanna let, you wanna let, the, uh, you wanna let the epoxy just sort of work its way up and sort of engulf the skull as you go. Uh, the other thing is when we hit it with the torch after, to remove any bubbles, make sure you don't put the flame right on the skull, uh, right on the bone, you can crack it, okay? So just kind of go around it real quick and it'll pop the bubbles, but don't go right on the skull. Anyway, here we go. All right, so I gotta tell you, I'm back here after my second or third pour here, and uh, there's a couple different things that can go wrong or right with epoxy, and sometimes you gotta kinda try this to get it right. Now, I know it's expensive to, you know, kinda guess and test, so I'm gonna try to help you out. Um, if you wanna do this and have a, like a perfect job, you know, you wanna hit a home run rate out of the park the first time out with epoxy, then you're gonna need to do uh, small, thin pours. Now, I know this is, uh, this epoxy says you can pour it up to two inches thick, and that's true. Um, but you don't want to get any more than two inches thick because you can get cracks, you can get bubbles, you can get all kinds of things that go wrong or, or right, depending. Um, so anyway, I'm back here and I've got basically just the top of the skull left. I believe I've done, uh, I've done two full pours. I'm going to do one more here right now and then that's going to seal the deal. Um, something really interesting happened with this one. Actually, I act, uh, the, the last pour I did, I actually poured too thick. Uh, I calculated my material that I needed for the for the pour and wasn't thinking of course because there's the the skull itself takes up some of the room so when i poured it um the fact that the the epoxy went around the skull actually came up thicker than two inches so what happened was uh, i used my torch to take all the bubbles off the top and then i left it to, to cure uh, but what happened was some air bubbles actually sort of escaped but didn't float the whole way to the top during the curing process and it turned out looking absolutely great. You should see the air bubbles uh, inside the skull. Now I'll show you this when it's all done, but it's really, really neat the way the air bubbles are. So anyway, um, hopefully I can get that to finish out the way that I like it and uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be really neat. 